Hi, in this video I'm going to show some of the moths and other bugs that came to a black light setup at Pinecrest Campground in Big Cypress. The restrooms face an open area so I figured it would be a good spot. And I'm just going to zoom out here using Google Earth to show where the campground is. It's again called Pinecrest Campground in Big Cypress National Preserve. And setting up a sheet with a black light, you know, it's something I've been doing for maybe uh, the past two or three years. I'm not an expert. It's it's not really rocket science, though. It's something um, that anyone can do, and it's a lot of fun. All you need is a sheet, and then I'm going to show kind of a little bit more about the setup. But anyway, here is Loop Road. So you see it goes from east to west and then north. This is Shark Valley going south here, and then Tamiami Trail, Highway 41, which connects Miami and Tampa. And zooming out, you can see Miami here and uh, the rest of South Florida. So back to my setup, these are the lights that I use. Basically, they're DJ black lights. I bought them based on a suggestion online. They work with USB cables, they're portable, they're cheap, and they work great. Uh, there are a bunch of other options. You know, anything that's a DJ black light basically will work. Um, and now I'm going to show one of the battery packs that I use. And yes, that is an Italian flag. I teach Italian, and I let my students use them in class. Um, the capacity is measured in milliamp hours, MAH. So the higher the number, the longer your lights will stay on. Uh, you can see that I'm kind of fidgeting around with them here, trying to get them to face the sheet just the right way. And um, this is just to show the difference, um, you know, a couple hours makes in terms of attracting the insects, how, how many things will come. And I'm just going to highlight some of the moths and other bugs that came to the sheet. I only stayed out till about 1030. But uh, I still had some pretty cool moths show up. This is maybe an Epidromia rotundata, and this is when it had finally settled on the sheet. A lot of times you'll see, you know, a moth flying around and hope, well, oh, is it going to land? And finally it'll land on the sheet. Uh, this is a growth sphinx. I think I remember hearing that this is the smallest sphinx in North America. I could be wrong. But uh, funnily enough, they all showed up at the same time. And look at this huge amount of mayflies. Uh, I took a few photos of them. And I'm um, not really sure about the species, but there were probably several different species. You can see they were kind of swarming the sheet, which was uh, pretty cool. That doesn't always happen, so this is all seasonal. This is some type of owlet moth. I'm not really sure about the ID. iNaturals is giving a suggestion, kind of like the, the auto ID that it gives. I don't know if that's accurate or not. There's another growth sphinx. Uh, a lot of other little beetles on here, too. I don't think I'm going to show any beetles uh, to you in this video. But uh, this is a cone head, some type of common cone head, which is a type of Katie did. And they could be green like this one, or they can be brown. So this is another, uh, another one that was crawling up higher on the sheet. And uh, the genus, I think, is Neoconocephalus, although I could be wrong. Um, this next one, yeah, is a salt marsh moth. So uh, here had already settled on the sheet, but I have a photo from when it was kind of flying around before it landed. And you can see it has a bright orange uh, abdomen, which is really, you know, catches your attention when you see this orange bug flying around. Okay, so this is a Virginia creeper moth, and I also had maybe three or four of these. So that was cool because I've actually never seen one, although I might have found some caterpillars not that long ago. Uh, I'm going to take it around the sheet here, but I also noticed uh, a few frogs were coming to the sheet. You know, obviously it's a smorgasbord for them, so they're enjoying. This is a greenhouse frog, which is non-native. Uh, this is a southern toad, which is native, and they get pretty big. A southern leopard frog. These were pretty small, the ones that were around the sheet. I, I didn't see a lot of big ones. And then an eastern narrow mouth toad. And bef while I was setting up the sheet, I could actually hear one calling. So it was cool to see one. All right, so here's a view of what was going on behind the sheet. So you can see both in front and behind. You know, these insects are all flying around and landing everywhere, landing wherever they can. You have to be careful when you're walking around not to step on anything. Um, oh, look, here's one on my finger. Uh, I think in the genus Samea, it's one of those... Pearl moth. This one's really cool. Uh, Hemeroblema opigena. And then I also had a giant sphinx come. And these things are huge. I mean, they look like birds when they're they're flying around the sheet. So I was really happy to see one. This is a skiff moth, which I, I see pretty often when I'm out here. This is some type of leaf-footed bug. I'm not sure which species. Uh, margin shining leaf chafer beetle. These are really uh, attractive and kind of a metallic color. There's a reed boring crambid moth. I see those a lot too, a spine green stink bug, not sure if that's the right ID. Uh, this looks like it's an eight spot moth, maybe, that was iNaturalist's suggestion. This is a type of leaf hopper, 
Um, you see a lot of interesting leaf hoppers. Uh, Packard's White Slug Moth. So uh, that was really nice to see. A Clademia Leaf Roller, maybe. This was a nice yellow looking one. Spiny Oak Slug Moth. These are also really cool, and I've seen them a few times on Loop Road. A Nebulous Crambid Moth. Another really nice one to see. And for this last part of the video, I just wanted to show this project that I created on iNaturalist. Uh, this is the search section up in the top left corner, whether or not you have an account, you could type in a species name, a project name, a genus, pretty much anything. Um, but again, I'm going to focus here on this project that I made. It's called Black Lighting Florida. I'm just typing in Florida Black Lighting. Uh, you could click on View Observations or you can click on About. If you click on About, it'll open up the project homepage. You can see some statistics. So you see the observation count, species count, the people. You can see the members, so only 20 members, not really that many people have added observations yet, but the people who have have added a lot of them. Uh, these are the recent observations, so you can see an amazing imperial moth here, tersus sphinx, uh, a couple of really interesting looking moths up at the top. I'm actually going to open up the imperial moth just to show a little bit more about all the things you can do with iNaturalist. So this photo is amazing. Uh, this was Aaron 567 in Pensacola. I mean, this could be a magazine cover. Uh... The life stage down here, that's a really cool feature. This is marked as an adult because it's an adult, not a caterpillar. And then if I open up the Imperial Moths page, there's a lot of information you can see here, like the seasonality. So you see all the different months, and you can see there's a big spike in September in observations, but you can obviously see in wintertime that these moths are not around. This is the taxonomy, so it's a breakdown of the classification, even going down to the subspecies that are uh, of the Imperial Moth. Here's the map that shows where it has been observed so far on iNaturalist. So all those uh, orange or reddish squares show where they've been observed all the way down to Argentina. And then, you know, if you click view all, you can see the observations. Right now I have this set to Florida. So that seasonality chart was only for Florida. If I take that off, you could still see a big spike for summertime. Uh, but you, I mean, eh, you can kind of see that there are other observations in there in wintertime. So I'm going to type South America in here, and this is really interesting what happens. Obviously, in South America, uh, when we're in summertime, they're in winter, so their peak is during our winter. Uh, so, you know, January, February, I thought that was really cool to see. And then I'm going to type in North America again, just to specify only North America. And then you'll see now there are basically no observations in January, February, the winter months, etc. Um... So yeah, the seasonality chart's really, really cool when the data is there, right? Obviously, you need to have the observations. And there's even this life stage thing, which has to do with that annotation I pointed out. So you can see adult, larvae, etc. So you can kind of get an idea of when you can see an adult, when you can see a caterpillar. And uh, you see the caterpillars are later in the season because the adults come, they lay their eggs. And then I think the caterpillars overwinter and then they hatch uh, the following year. So that's that's really interesting. And, you know, you can learn so much using these, these species pages. Uh, I'm just going to show you some of the observations here. And so apparently in the genus that the imperial moth is in, there are four different species that are, can be seen in North America, right? You can see a breakdown of the most common one. And then if I hit the X here, I'm just seeing worldwide the, the observations of this genus. So you can see it's a new world species only found in North, Central, and South America. And now there are 13 species, right? Since we're not only looking at North America, there must be some that are only found in South America. And that's 8,000 observations. That's a lot of data. This can be very useful to somebody who's studying moths, who's studying this genus. And you never know when, you know, somebody, a citizen scientist, is going to put some information out there that, that people can use. This is a, the, ob the observers. So it's kind of like a leaderboard for who has the most observations. By species, uh, bird or naturalist has seen five different species of this, uh, of the imperial moth, so that's pretty cool. And then these are the top identifiers. So you can use something like this to maybe reach out to one of these people and say, hey, can you help, can you look at this moth and see if it is an imperial moth, etc. So it kind of makes it easier to reach out to the community and learn more uh, about what you found. Um, I'm just viewing the observations in different ways, going, you know, back in the project. So you can see all of these pretty much show um, these insects either on a sheet, maybe on someone's hand. This was a Hercules beetle, beetle I found. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. That's how the, the project works. If you click species, 
It gives you a breakdown of the most observed species that have been added to this project. So this can be also pretty cool. And of course, you know, you could always look within a specific part of Florida. Um, but yeah, I'm just closing the video with this really cool trail cam shot I got of a prothonotary warbler. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.